Hey everyone, today we are going to be going over the most requested by far uh, Material UI component and that is the grid and how the grid layout works in material design. It's pretty complex if you've never used a grid layout before and it's not that easy to work with. So I've prepared some examples here for you and we're going to go through the API nice and slowly and hopefully I'll give you a good understanding of how grid works and how you can use it to customize your layout for your application. By the way, if you find value in this video, please, please, please consider leaving a comment, liking the video, or subscribing. It really helps the channel and it really helps with the YouTube algorithm to get my videos out there to more and more people so I can continue doing this. So let's jump straight into the basics of how grid works. The first thing you need to know is number one, the grid layout is split into 12 different columns, which is pretty standard for um, most UI library grid layouts. And what that means is it pretty much what it does is it splits your screen or the screen that the user has when they're viewing their application or any container that you want into 12 equally sized quadrants. And the second thing you need to know is the two basic components of grid. One is known as a container and one is known as an item. As you can see here, if I were to inspect this code on Material site, we can see that you can define your grid and then you can either be a container or an item. And each grid item has to be within a grid container. Now, let's take a look at exactly what that means. Let's say this dark gray area that we have over here is the user's screen. It's what the user can see when they're on your website. Now, I have this whole, uh, this whole area can be said to be a container. Um, and a container works very similar to Flexbox, if you've ever used Flexbox. And in fact, um, behind the hood, Material UI actually, actually uses Flex. And what that means is the container is going to be split up into different rows. And each row has 12 columns that it can fill. An item can be sized anywhere from zero to 12 columns. So for example here, this big box over here that has XS equals 12 inside of it, don't worry about the XS for now. What the 12 means is this is a grid item and it is taking up all 12 spaces in this particular row of our container. Now if we look at the next row of the same container, we have two items in here. The first item takes up six um, out of the 12 spots in the container. And the second item also takes up six out of the 12 spots uh, in the container. Thus, each of them share the row equally because six out of 12 is 50%. So they both share 50% of the, of the, um, of the uh, spacing of the available columns within this specific row. And then you can say the same thing down here uh, for these other grid items, which each take up three out of 12, which is a fourth, which is why all four of them can actually share this row equally. Now let's go ahead and edit this code. Take a look at what's happening underneath the hood. Now, you'll see here, if I go to demo.js, we have essentially one grid container and then a bunch of items in between here. So let's go ahead and refresh this to see it loads properly. And you'll see it's the same. The only difference is the dark theme isn't coming through because um, the dark theme is actually set on the Material UI website level, whereas this is just a code sandbox example. But over here, we can see that we have our grid item, which is XS equals 12. Like I said, don't worry about the excess right now, but 12, which means this item will take up 12 of the available columns on uh, the row that it gets put on. This item will take up six of the available columns on the row that is put on, same with this one, and those are those two items right there. And then we have all of those three ones over here. Now, what would happen if I removed two of these items that were taking up three spots and I put one of the six um, sized uh, items in here instead. Well, what happens is you'll see we have the two, three items and then the sixth one that comes at the end. Pretty much as long as a row has elements adding up to at least 12 or at most 12, sorry, then it will fit on the same row. But as soon as I give this seven, we would see here that we would have two items that are three and three, which is six. And now the available space remaining for this row is six, but our next item is an item that is size seven. So what it's going to do is it's going to put it on the next row because we don't have enough space to pop that in here. So you can do really cool designs by making grid items that are size one and then, you know, four and then five and then uh, two, as long as it adds up to 12 and have things on the same row and then have everything 
um, past that sort of just get pushed down. Now let's talk about what this excess means. So if we go back to the default theme that Material UI has, you'll see here um, that Material UI has a couple custom breakpoints. These breakpoints are labeled XS, XSM, um, MD, LG, and XL, which is just extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And you'll see that the values of each of these um, sizings is uh, pretty straightforward. So for XS, um, these values are in pixels, by the way. An XS screen is a screen that is from 0 pixels wide to 600 pixels wide. An SM screen is any screen that is from 600 pixels wide to 960, and so on and so forth. Anything above 9, uh, 1920 as for screen size is considered XL. So you'll see here, we're saying on the grid item, and if you look at the API, you'll see that you can have a prop for every single one of those sizings. We have XL, XS, and then up here we have SM, MD, and LG. We are saying here, for any screen size that is extra small and up, we want this grid item to take up all 12 available spots in a row. Now, if I were to make this SM equals six, what is going to happen is on an extra small screen, and let me go ahead and save that, um, on an extra small screen now, this is going to take up all 12 spots, but as soon as the um, screen gets big enough that it is now in the SM category, it is only gonna take up six. And the way these works are whenever you declare a sizing, it will go for that size and everything bigger than it. So when we declare XS equals six here, that means everything bigger than XS will also be, or sorry, SM will also be six, which means SM is six, MD is six, LG is six, and XL is six, unless I specifically state otherwise. For example, if I put LG equals like four here, then from SM to LG, it will be six, and then LG plus it will be four. And I think I'm really zoomed in right now, so it's gonna be hard to get my screen to uh, fit the LG. Um, but if I zoom out enough, you'll see here that it takes up now because my screen is in considered LG. Um, it only takes up four spots. And that's why this XS6 is allowed to come up on this next row. Um, so it, it might sound a bit complicated, but when you start coding and when you start actually doing it, it gets really nice because you'll also see if I resize the screen over here that these grid items will actually scale um, and, and even without any of these dynamic breakpoints. So let me like remove this and make this equal to six. Um, you'll see here, as I make it bigger or smaller, all of these grid items actually grow bigger with the screen. So your layout will stay consistent and you can do a lot of cool um, mobile customizations as well using this. So um, that's why Material UI is one of the best frameworks for React because it's really easy to make a responsive uh, website that looks amazing on desktop, but also amazing on mobile as well. Um, so now let's get into some of the more intricate um, aspects of the grid now that you understand the basics. One thing I want to talk about is this attribute spacing, which if we go to the API, we'll see that spacing, where did it go? Um, spacing is down here. You can give spacing a value anywhere from zero to 10. Now let's see what it would look like if instead of passing spacing here to this container uh, as three, if I passed it in instead as uh, just nothing, um, the default will be zero. So as you can see, all of our grid items, and I can make this a bit, um, let's make this a bit easier to actually uh, see by giving this a background color of let's say like red. Uh, that hurts my eyes, let's make it blue. <laughs> and we can see here that what happens is all the grid items stick together perfectly. There's no space in between any of these grid items. Whereas before, if I were to go back to our container, spacing can only be used on a container, and I say spacing is equal to three, it will automatically add some spacing um, between all the grid items. And it's really smart because you'll see that it also added um, spacing in between the bottom and top of these grid items as well. Yet it didn't add any padding above this because there's no grid item above this, uh, uh, there's no grid item above this specific grid item. So spacing is actually done extremely well. And these spacing values, zero to 10, actually correspond once again to the values you have in spacing in your actual um, in your actual theme. If you set, I think the default for Material UI is four pixels. So if you do three, it'll give everything a spacing of three times four, uh, which is 12 uh, PX in between all of your grid items. And I think the maximum you can have here is 10. So here's what it'll look like if we 
put 10 to that, you'll see things are very uh, spaced out and it gives you a bit less room for your actual grid items as a whole. Now, another really nice intricate thing to know about grid is that you can actually have a grid that is a container and an item. And I'll show you an example of just a second, but first we have to understand how um, direction works. So by default, um, if we look at our direction prop, by default our direction is row, which means the grid items are going to try to be row by row. And let's add some more spacing. Let's just set the spacing too, just so it's easier to see and doesn't hurt our eyes. Um, and let's make the color white uh, of the text. So that's a bit nicer. So we can see here that it aligns our grids, uh, our grid items in rows. Whenever there is enough space to fit another grid item um, in a specific row, it will put those grid items side by side in row. Now let's see what happens if I change it from uh, direction row, which is the default, to direction column. And by the way, this is also only usable on a container. Let's give this a direction of column and see what happens. Bam. As you can see, what it'll do is it'll split your screen up into columns now. And every single item will be on its own column. Um, and it sort of looks a bit weird. Um, but essentially, that's how it works. So if you ever want to stack items on top of each other, and this is the same as Flexbox's columns, you can do it like this. Now the cool part is, each one of these columns can be a container in their own right. So let's look at, for example, this first XS equals 6. Let's change this to be XS equals 12. Um, we'll change the naming so it's not confusing, and we'll change this to be equals to 12. And then we'll give this a container attribute as well. And be when we, as soon as we give this a container attribute, you'll see that it's sort of everything inside of it shrinks down. Now, what we can do here is we can make more grid items and use the excess and the sizing the same way that we nat that we would have used it in the actual um, in the previous example where we had a row instead of direction. So we can get make a grid item uh, excess equals to three. Let's go ahead and do that, and let's put this paper in here. So you'll see here that now this will line up. Oops, let me just make this prettier. And we can copy this over three times for four different items. And you'll see here now this container, even though um, the uh, the overall container has a direction of column, this container has a direction of row and you can have nested items inside of here. And in fact, each one of these items can also have nested containers and so on and so forth. So if you wanted to, for example, uh, create a layout for your website, let's go ahead and do like a really, really, really basic layout. So um, let's say I want like, a, so let's say I'm gonna have a header so I can make a grid item, um, let's make a grid, item xx equals 12 so it takes up the full width and let's make this a container and then I can be like um, whoops and then in here let's have one item so like grid item uh, xs let's say equals like 2 and let's put some typography in here um, or let's just put some text so like uh, welcome Anthony or something and then we can for example um, put on the other side uh, we can have an empty grid item in here to add some spacing so let's say grid item 8 xx equals 8 and we can make that self-closing and then another grid item xs equals 2 so this will be on the far right of this and by the way there's better ways to do that which we'll go into in just a second but this is just to illustrate um, how you can use it so grid item xs equals 2 so you'll notice that this 8 2 and 2 add up to 12 and we could put like a logout button or a logout text here I'm not sure why uh, code sandbox isn't auto formatting this code for me um, I don't know if I missed some syntax somewhere so let's go ahead and look through um, yeah, it looks like I accidentally copied this over twice. Okay, so there we go. So by using the spacing, we've sort of pushed, um, we've pushed these two things to the opposite sides of the screen. And you'll see as I got bigger and smaller, they sort of always go there. Now let's say I wanted something else, another section. So I can do another grid item. And this is in our main grid right now. We can say XS is 12 again. Um, and let's say like this, is just, uh, for example, maybe just like a line or something. 
just for simplicity's sake. Um, and then we can have another grid item. And then this will contain, or in fact, let's import typography. Um, let's import divider. Import divider from slash divider. Oops. And we can get rid of paper. And instead of this line, let's actually do a divider. So this divider could like, for example, separate our content. And then down here, we'll add uh, another container. And then in here, we could add more um, content. So grid item excess equals like, let's say six. Um, and then it'll say something like, uh, you know, whatever, whatever we want to, whatever type of content you would want to display here. So like, um, let's say if it's just some like random text, Laura, let's just get a bunch of this text and just like display that here. Oops. And then we can do the same thing again down here. And you'll see that this text is sort of split. And we can even make this look a bit nicer by adding some spacing. Uh, let's give the spacing of two so that these are spaced out of it. And there you go. So this is how you can sort of structure a website and make a layout out of it by just constantly using grids uh, within each other. And then you get to the final part of grid, which is all the justifying, um, the aligning and the aligned content. So this is really for if you're trying to, for example, center items or change the way an item uh, looks when you actually display it inside. So this stuff is the exact same way as um, the exact same as you would have it in uh, Flexbox, if you use Flexbox. The way I like to do it is I like to sort of inspect element. Um, when I was first beginning and I didn't have a great understanding about grid, you can click on the div uh, that has a grid and you could do, for example, like align items. And then like I can like just click my arrow key and go down. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom in a tiny bit. Um, I can click my arrow key and go down and see what is actually changing. Um, and I can even, if I want to censor something, I can type in center and go down this list to see what actually uh, has a change that works. So for example, um, if I come to here, I'll see that when I have a line, um, a line content and align items to center, it doesn't really do anything. But if I have a line uh, self-centered, then it'll align everything inside of it to be centered as well. So this is like a quick and cheap and sort of easy way uh, to, to learn how to um, to learn how to use these attributes if you're not familiar with Flexbox. And that's how I mostly used to do it when I was starting out as well. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much how uh, Grid works. I hope you guys found value in this video. Please uh, consider, if you did, leaving a comment, liking, or subscribing. It really helps with the algorithm, and it really helps the channel grow. Um, please leave any suggestions on any other Matil UI topics you would like to learn. If I um, didn't go and thoroughly enough, please let me know, and I'll answer any questions in the comments. And I hope everyone's staying safe and has an amazing day.